With the trade deadline approaching, NBA rumors have been running through the mill. And with the Boston Celtics having an open roster spot, what are some potential buyout candidates that the Celtics could look out after and bring in with this last roster spot? We'll explore some news and rumblings about who the Celtics could go after and why they will be impactful pieces to this last roster spot on the team. We'll also be looking at a new insane stat about Joe Missoula that could possibly back him up to winning coach of the year and sending Joe Missoula heaters into shambles. Also looking at Sam Hauser's great individual stat from last game and looking at how he's been an impactful spark plug for this bench. All that and more on this episode of Celtics Digest. I'm Bruce Velez, but before we get into any Boston Celtics news, I would like to say shout out to you guys. We recently just hit 2,300 subscribers. We're so close to 2,400 and our next goal is three thousand subscribers so if you guys want to make sure you stay up to date on everything boston celtics and get daily uploads of celtics content no other channel is bringing that to you guys besides celtics digest make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family would greatly appreciate it but let's get into the news at hand make sure to grab a snack get ready to go as this is going to be a jam-packed episode breaking down the new celtics news for you guys today first we're looking at sam hauser setting an individual record on a individual stat which was very very great to see talking about how he's been an impactful spark plug for this bench if you guys don't know last game versus the chicago bulls sam hauser had a terrific performance putting up 10 rebounds getting his first ever double digit rebound game in his career congratulations to you sam hauser and he's been very impactful for this celtics bench so far he's had some games where he's had to come in the starting lineup some of those games he's done solid some of the games he hasn't i think he's been more effective as a bench scorer but let's look at sam hauser's stats so far this season so far he's averaging 9.7 points over three compared to what he was last season, averaging one more total rebound from three point up from 2.4 to 3.4 this season. Looking at the assists, he is around the same, but his shooting numbers have gone up, shooting 46.5% from the field, 42.6% from three, shooting 83% from the free throw. Sam Hauser has been lights out for this Boston Celtics team, has been, I think, consistently their best three-point shooter this season so far, and has been a great spark plug for this bench. I personally was under the impressions that the Celtics would have to get a veteran wing at the trade deadline to bring in because I didn't like the looks of Sam Hauser, but he has completely changed my mind and proved me wrong so far this season. I personally think that Sam Hauser is going to be a contending piece and might even deserve an extension in the future if he keeps up putting these numbers. We want to look at crafted NBA. We can look and see that Sam Hauser is dominant in the shooting percentages. As you guys can see, 89th percentile in true shooting, 94th percentile in here, three-point attempts, 99 percent tile right there proving to be a top 75 percent player in the nba on offense if we want to look at his defensive stats a lot of people want to go in the comments say bruce sam hauser's not a great defender he's just throwing out with the starters he's not that great but if you look at his rim defense and his actual playing of players when they attack the room he is an effective defender for the celtics and he definitely deserves to get that recognition on the defensive side of the floor if we look his rim def defense top 84 percentile rim frequency top 87 percentile his versatility 66 percentile not the greatest defender obviously not the greatest deflections but if you want to look at that block percentage top 48 percentile a guy like sam hauser a guy who shoots threes isn't known for his defense leading being in the top 48 percentile for blocks at his position is crazy yes top 75 percentile on offense top 42 percentile on defense not the greatest defender but if you can get those numbers up to be a top 50 percentile defender and a top 75 offensive player he is well of being a effective piece for the celtics team and definitely an effective piece for this bench let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What are your guys' opinions on Sam Hauser? Personally, I think he is a great fit for the Celtics team. I think he works great with the starters. I think he works great with this bench. Him and Peyton Pritchard have built some great chemistry. Even him and Luke Cornett, I recently saw a TikTok talking about Luke Cornett's bench celebrations. And when Hauser gets those dunks, Luke Cornett is giddy like a five-year-old at a birthday party, dancing around, having a good time, celebrating for his friends. I love to see that as a Celtics fan. And it just makes me so happy to see these guys all join together and getting this chemistry down before. We even get into the grueling part of the season. We're only 18 games in here, guys, and they're already gelling like they're best friends. That's great to see. Let's get into some more news at hand, talking about how Joe Mazzullo could possibly be coach of the year. And I know this sounds crazy to you guys. Joe Mazzullo doesn't call timeouts. Joe Mazzullo only shoots threes. Joe Mazzullo is the worst coach. I see the comments in my description and in my comments. And guys, 
I don't know why you guys be hating on Joe Missoula. He was thrown into this coaching thing out of the blue last season after guys and assistants like Will Hardy got hired to be the Utah Jazz head coach, like Damon Stoudemire had left to go to be a college coach. He was thrown in the mess with not knowing it was going to be his team at all. And this season so far, after he's had full control of this team, only 18 games in the season, only having four losses is great for a coach that you want to low-key kind of call a rookie head coach. He was not a rookie last He was a rookie last year, but this is his first full year, full swing of things, first training camp, first everything where he knows there's his guys. And let's look at this insane stat here with Joe Mazzulla from Celtics. That's Joe Mazzulla's record through his 100 games as Boston's head coach is 71 and 29. He currently has the highest winning percentage of 0.71 of any coach in NBA history. Obviously, we're looking at a guy who came into a winning team. They had guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. They had recently made the finals two years ago, last year getting short, making the Eastern Conference Finals. But Joe Mazzulla, obviously having a lot of talent to work with already, has shown that he can be a great head coach with the talent that he's provided. He's not tanking this team. He's not looking like a mediocre team. A lot of these coaches would have been thrown into this circumstance not knowing how to handle with these star players, and they would have been a middle-of-the-pack team last year or a middle-of-pack of the team this season. But Joe Mazzulla has overcome those adversities, and even though he's dealt with a lot of complaints from the fans, from the organization, he has combated that and has proved that he is a killer coach leading this team to a great record. Obviously, does he have some flaws? Yes, every coach is going to have their flaws. But Joe Mazzulla having this great record could possibly be leading him being to coach of the year. Uh, he, obviously, the Celtics are the top team in the Eastern Conference right now at 14-4, and four, and they're definitely going to be a top team in the East for the rest of the season. If Joe Mazzulla can keep up that resume of being a top team in the Eastern Conference, leading a great team with great players, having those players also play on all NBA teams and making all-star games, having guys like Sam Hauser and Derek White step up in their roles, he can easily win this Coach of the Year award. And I think it's a possibility that Joe Mazzulla definitely finishes in the top three for Coach of the Year. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But let's get into the main news at hand. The main news why you guys clicked on the video, and that is potential buyout candidates for the Boston Celtics. As I mentioned, the Boston Celtics do have an open roster spot at the moment, and they could go and look out to get some buyout candidates. We've talked about in the past them going after some certain guys, and we're going to be talking about some new guys that have come out with the new rumors. Obviously, with the trade deadline getting closer and closer every single day. The rumors are spilling. The rumors are getting out there. And we have some new articles from Hoops Hype to break down looking at some possible players that the Celtics can go after. So we want to look at Celtics trader Michael A. Scotto, a big reporter for Hoops Hype, said the Celtics have eyes on the buyout market and they're interested in John Conchar and had interest in Reggie Bullock before shining with Houston. With the roster spot open, most executives believe the Boston Celtics will stand pat and wait until the buyout market to add another veteran for a championship run. It's worth noting that Boston expressed interest in several veterans, including re-signing Blake Griffin and free agent forward TJ Warren last offseason. Lastly, before signing with Houston, Reggie Bullock had interest from several teams, including the Bucks, the Miami Heat, the Celtics, Clippers, and Pelicans, league sources told Hoops Hype. Given his proven 3 and D capability and current role in Houston, he's also a name to watch. Reserve forward John Karchar is also a candidate to be dealt before the February trade deadline, and the Celtics, Warriors, and Lakers are among teams who have kept tabs on Karchar's situation from afar. That, and that is something that Hoop Hype has learned. So honestly, this is some big news. As we've talked about in the offseason, Blake Griffin is a possibility to be re-signing as a veteran on buyout candidate. Personally, I don't think that is realistically going to happen. If they were going to do that, I think it would have already happened last offseason. I think Blake Griffin is well on the way to retirement, and I think he's starting to fade out of the league. A guy like TJ Warren, they had brought in and did some workouts with this offseason, like Lamar Stevens, like O'Shea Brissett, like Wenyon Gabriel, but they used those contracts to sign Wenyon Gabriel and Lamar Stevens. They did not go after TJ Warren, which makes me lead that TJ Warren kind of lost a little bit of a step there defensively. He's a little bit of a veteran, too much for the Celtics. He's getting a little too older in age with the injuries and stuff. Might have lost a little bit of a step. And guys like Lamar Stevens, O'Shea Brissett, they're very similar to what TJ Warren can do. They're just a little bit younger and have a little bit more energy. And I think that's what the Celtics went with. When we look at a guy like Reggie Bullock, I think he's a great piece that the Celtics could add as a 3 and D wing. A guy that I would think would have been a very impactful piece if we hadn't seen how Sam Hauser has already been for the Boston Celtics so far. But since we've seen how dominant Sam Hauser has been, I don't know if Reggie Bullock is the necessary guy to bring in. He also is a name to be brought up in Houston as well because even though Houston is doing well and he is solid, his name hasn't been really played that much. Reggie Bullock hasn't been a main contributor for this Houston Rockets team as they have so many young and veteran mismatch of guys. They have so many guys on that roster. I could see him getting treated later down the line. But a guy that we want to mention is John Conchar. Let's look at John 
John Conchar's stats, excuse me. In the 13 games that he's played, he's had 3 points, 4.2 total rebounds, and 1.7 assists. Not the greatest shooting numbers for Conchar, shooting very low. 35% from the field this year, 32% from 3, and 50% from the field. Free throw, so a little bit worse of shooting numbers, but John Conchar maybe not getting the best looks and opportunities for this Memphis Grizzlies team. Obviously, with John Morant, Marcus Smart, no Tyus Jones now, they have a lot of unexperienced guards that need to get this playing time. John Contra has gotten that playing time. It just hasn't excelled to it that much. I think he could be a cool spark plug type of shooter off the bench, kind of like what Smeema High Luke is for the Boston Celtics. But ultimately, since we already have Smeema High Luke, and I think he kind of presents that role that John Contra already does, I don't know if John Contra is a necessary piece for the Celtics to go after. Personally, I think that the big man, the, the last spot that we need to ad address is a big man. I think, obviously, Namus Keita has proved to be a solid big man for us in the minutes that he's played, but he hasn't gotten that many minutes and that many looks. Luke Cornett, same thing, but not the greatest offensive rebounder. I think the Celtics know, need to go after an offensive rebounding big, and I think that is the piece and the role that the Celtics are missing for their 15th roster spot. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who do you guys think that the Boston Celtics should go after with their last roster spot? And do you guys like John Contra as a possible buyout candidate? And if not, what are some other possible buyout candidates that you guys see around the league that the Celtics could go after? Maybe Will Barton, he's a possibility. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you guys are still not subscribed at this point in the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button as we know you enjoy the Celtics content that we be pushing out. I'm Bruce Velez. Thank you guys for so much for tuning in to this episode today, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.